Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the Save Your Breath Respiratory Health webinar. Our expert and presenter today will be Kendra Almer. Kendra is an occupational health and safety nurse with the network. Welcome. My name is Kendra Almer and I'm an agriculture occupational health nurse employed here at the Canadian Centre for Health and Safety in Agriculture at the University of Saskatchewan. I grew up on a mixed farm in Saskatchewan and continue to farm today with my family. I have the privilege in my position as a registered nurse at the centre to work with many farmers and agriculture workers throughout the province to assist them in practicing and promoting their agriculture health and safety. The goal of CCHSA is to carry out research, training, service and prevention for the farmers and rural people of Saskatchewan and Canada. The Agriculture Health and Safety Network is the extension division of CCHSA with the mission to improve the health and safety on the farm through education, service and evaluation research with the ultimate goal of reducing injury and illness related to the farm environment through our cooperative efforts with our partners. Thank you to Farm Credit Canada for your partnership in funding this four-part webinar series and working with the network's mission. Numerous studies have demonstrated a significantly increased risk of respiratory health concerns among farmers and farm workers. This presentation will highlight how farmers and egg workers can save their breath as they are exposed to numerous hazards in the agriculture workplace. On the farm, these hazards are in the form of dust, gas, chemicals, and animal diseases. If the hazards are not controlled, this can result in minor short-term illnesses or may progress to chronic symptoms, permanent disability, or death. With awareness of these illnesses and injuries, they are preventable. This presentation will give a brief review of the respiratory system and how we breathe to include our normal defense mechanisms that are present when we are exposed to respiratory hazards. The type of respiratory hazards that are most commonly present in the agriculture setting will be identified. It is very important that farmers recognize the types of hazards that they are personally exposed to. Then we will explore options of how farmers can manage these hazards and protect their respiratory health. As the use of respiratory PPE is the last line of defense, we will review correct selection, use, and care of respirators that are most common in agriculture production. An average person can go weeks without food, days without water, but only seconds without breathing. It is so important to take care of your respiratory health. The respiratory system is susceptible to damage caused by inhaled toxic materials and irritants because the surface area of the lungs exposed to the air is very large and the body's need for oxygen very great. The ability of the respiratory system to function properly has a great impact on the entire body. Exposure to respiratory hazards can affect our lung function, which is then our ability to breathe air in and out of our bodies. Although respiratory diseases can take years to develop, the sy symptoms are not immediately apparent. It is important to listen to our bodies when they present symptoms that are not normal. What happens when you breathe? Air is breathed in through your nose, Small bones and cartridge then cause the air to swirl. It then enters your throat and divided into two tubes, the esophagus and the trachea. The trachea then divides into two tubes called bronchi. The bronchi enter the lungs and divide into smaller tubes called bronchioles. The bronchioles end in little air sacs. There's approximately three million of these sacs where Walls are thin enough to allow the gases to be absorbed and released into the bloodstream. Then your body's normal defense mechanisms, such as nasal hair, filter out large particles. The mucus traps some of the particles found in the dust, fumes, and smoke. 
some vapors and mist may be dissolved in the mucus, then your sneeze is a reflex action that rids your nose of irritating substances. Tiny hair-like structures then sweep mucus to the back of your throat where you swallow and, it, and it, this contains substances that which can be dissolved. A cough is a reflex action that rids your bronchi of mucus and dissolves substances. It is important to note that tiny particles of dust not visible to the human eye may bypass these normal defense mechanisms and end up deep in your lungs. Inhaled chemical vapors, gas, and mist enter the bloodstream and are carried then to all parts of the body. Smaller particles can reach the smaller airways and aren't trapped by the mucus. Particles in size of less than 10 microns can reach the alveoli and are considered respirable. It is important to prevent the dust, gas, and fumes from entering our respiratory system. Depending on the type of operation, workers are likely to inhale dust on a daily basis that can originate from the soil, animals, animal feeds, their waste, plants, products of decay and fermentation, or stored plant materials, applied pesticides and fertilizers, residues, and exhaust fumes from operating farm equipment. So the respiratory hazards on the farm can come in the form of the dust, um, that are often examples present from loading and unloading grain, grinding the feed, shoveling grain, handling bales, feeding animals, or managing manure. Examples can include in the form of bacteria, endotoxin, fungal spores, and pesticide residues. Gases are present um, in the silos. There's nitrogen dioxide, running motors in confined areas, carbon monoxide present, animal and manure pits, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, methane, and welding fumes are some examples. Chemicals are also found um, throughout the farm setting. Um, inhalation during preparation or application of herbicides, insecticides, fumigates, um, and hydrous ammonia, disinfectants um, from washing animal confinement barns are all a few examples of the chemicals found. Um, the hazards also in the form of animal disease, the zoonosis, um, and the sources of the viruses and bacteria such as hantavirus, anthrax, brucellus, and influenza. Numerous studies have demonstrated a significantly increased risk of respiratory health among farmers and farm workers. Respiratory diseases due to agriculture exposures are preventable. It's also important to note, because of the proven addictive uh, adverse effects of smoking and agriculture dust exposure, smoking sensation programs are strongly recommended for anyone in regular contact with agricultural dust. For health professionals working with farmers, this is one of the most important preventative actions that is recommended to farmers. Remember, smoking and grain dust do not mix well. It is important to understand some of the health effects as a result of the respiratory hazard exposures. Health effects of dust exposure can include cough, wheeze, phlegm, shortness of breath, allergies, and lowered breathing capacity. With exposure to molds and fungi, we can see allergic reactions, asthma, throat irritation, and nonspecific symptoms such as headaches and poor appetite. With gas exposures, that can be the symptoms either immediate or delayed can be seen, and sometimes both. This is very specific to the type of symptom and the health effects depend on the type of gas exposure. With metal fumes, there's often respiratory eye and throat irritation, cough, wheeze, and asthma, as well as a flu-like condition called metal fume fever. With chemical exposures, this varies also with the type of chemical. Mild exposures can result in eye irritations and severe exposures can result in suffocation from swelling of the airways. With zoonotic diseases, 
that are these are the diseases passed from animals to humans um, caused by the va viruses, bacteria, fungi, and parasites can prevent a variety of symptoms also, often cause presenting flu-like symptoms. As many of the respiratory diseases take years to develop and occur inside our airways, the symptoms are not always immediately apparent compared to a traumatic physical injury. General symptoms can include cough, runny or sore eyes, sore throat, stuffy nose or sneezing, wheezing, tightness in chest, shortness of breath, nausea, and vomiting. Don't ignore respiratory symptoms that develop and that aren't normal for you. This is your body's way of telling you that your respiratory system needs attention. Follow up with your family physician if you are experiencing these symptoms outside of a cold. Some of the respiratory diseases that result from the agriculture exposures can include acute inflammation, allergies, chronic sinusitis, bronchitis, increased airway reactivity, asthma, occupational asthma, organic dust toxic syndrome, and farmer's lungs. Numerous studies have demonstrated a significantly in ri increased risk of respiratory morbidity and mortality among farmers and workers. This risk occurs despite lower prevalence of smoking among farmers compared with the general population. Some examples of the medical conditions um, can include organic dust toxic syndrome, this disease occurs when farmers are exposed to moldy grains, hay, or silage. The initial symptoms include burning in the eyes and throat, headache, and sometimes a cough. Four to six hours later, an exposed person may suffer with fever, chest discomfort, weakness, and a non-productive cough. There is usually no permanent lung damage, and large amounts of dust exposure are necessary to trigger this symptom syndrome. As the name suggests, farmer's lung is caused by inhaling certain allergy-causing dust found in the farming operation. This is an allergic reaction and can be triggered by increasingly small amounts of dust. The disease is most common in regions where wet weather, at, for example, when there's wet weather at harvest time. Farmer's lung is also more common on dairy farms especially those not equipped with automated equipment for handling hay or feed. Incidents of farmer's lawn occur most often in late winter or early spring when stored hay or grain is used to feed livestock. Fever occurs four to six hours after exposure. Other symptoms include weakness, chills, cough with fever, pardon me, cough with phlegm, fever, and a general feeling of unwellness. This disease may have a more gradual onset with labored breathing, weight loss, and increasing fatigue. Blood tests, x-rays, and lung tests will show changes from normal. The lungs can be permanently damaged. It's very important to note with these two medical conditions and other illnesses that they can only be distinguished by a medical examination and testing. Hantavirus. Hantaviruses are rodent-borne zoonotic viruses that are transmitted to humans mainly by inhalation of virus-contaminated aerosols of rodent excretions. Hantavirus pulmonary syndrome is a severe acute disease that is associated with respiratory failure, pulmonary edema, and carcinogenic shock. 40 to 50% of cases are fatal. This virus is commonly distributed by deer mice. A person exposed to hantavirus can show flu-like symptoms within one to six weeks, but no throat or nasal symptoms. There is no specific vaccine, treatment, or cure. Early recognition can help with quick and full recovery. If you are experiencing any symptoms after exposure to rodents, 
excretions, please go see your doctor as soon as possible. It is very important to protect yourself. To protect yourself when working in areas that are potentially exposed to rodents and their saliva and excretions, use PPE that includes rubber gloves, goggles, as well as a mask with a HEPA filter such as a P100. Either a full face or half face respirator with goggles is recommended in areas that are heavily contaminated. Do not sweep or vacuum rodent droppings. This will release the particles into the air that you will then breathe in. Soak or spray spray dead mice, nests, and droppings with a one-to-one solution of household bleach for about 10 minutes to kill off the virus before entering the area. Use good ventilation. Use disinfectant and hot soapy water to clean personal protective equipment and cleaning equipment after you're done with it. It is important to identify the hazards that you are exposed to on your farm or agriculture workplace. Then take the time to explore the hierarchy of control to see what you can do to reduce the hazardous exposures. Prevention of agriculture respiratory illnesses should take a multifaceted approach that includes reduction of the source of exposure through engineering, substitution, and alteration of work practices, appropriate monitoring, and appropriate use of properly selected fitted PPE or respirators. Start with elimination, which is the most effective control. You need to ask, can the hazard be eliminated? Making the decision to eliminate an exposure, such as not growing a specific crop on your farm, not using a herbicide, or not raising hogs are all examples of eliminating a specific hazard to your health. Not harvesting high moisture crops and placing it in a bin will eliminate the risk of being exposed to spoiled and moldy grain. Substitution, is there a different product or process that I can do on my farm to decrease the risk to my health? Substitution is about making choices to control hazards by choosing alternative products. For example, a less toxic chemical may be used rather than one with a high hazard rating. Engineering and design is the next most effective control and requires a physical change to the workplace. Consider how a process, building, or machine can be altered to reduce the hazard. This can be as simple as the location you stand when unloading grain or extending a spout on a feed chute to reduce dust exposure to the farmer. Administrative controls, including safe work practices, is the next next most effective control. Is there a different way you can perform a task to reduce the health hazard? Is there better ventilation um, that can be implemented? For example, when a farmer is welding outside um, as opposed to inside, or opening up barn doors to allow airflow when cleaning out the barn, or wetting down an area to reduce dust. Personal protective equipment is the last line of defense. All other controls should be attempted first. And PPE, when possible, should be used in combination with the other controls. For example, use a P100 respirator in combination with good ventilation, which is an engineering design control, when in an area where you suspect mouse droppings and there is a risk for hantavirus. When determining which respirator is needed for different tasks, it is important to remember that respirators can only provide adequate protection if they are appropriately selected for the task based on understanding the types of hazards you will be exposed to that day fitted correctly for the person wearing the respirator, consistently worn properly, and regularly maintained and replaced when needed. 
It is important to store respirators in areas around the farm in which they are needed. Chances are you will not take the time to go get a respirator if you have to go to another location to retrieve it. Aim to keep respirators in locations such as the water truck, the sprayer, the tractor, the combine, in storage buildings around grain bins, or by the air compressor in the shop. A two-strap disposable respirator with a nose clip are commonly the respirator of choice when one is exposed to dust exposures. Remember to always check that a NIOSH-approved emblem is on the mask with an efficiency rating greater than 95%. There are three levels of filter efficiencies, typically 95%, 99%, and 99.7%. The higher the number, the higher percentage of particulates the filter will remove. Ensure that you conduct a seal check or fit check every time you use the respirator, as well as inspect it for damage or worn parts. Half-face respirators are another type of respirator commonly used in the agriculture workplace. There are different brands, styles, and sizes available. These respirators require fit testing, and fit checks are recommended with every use. A variety of cartridge choices are available to match the hazard you are protecting against. The approximate cost of the half face respirator is $40. Common cartridges used in half face or full face respirators are shown in this slide. The P100 particulate filters are pink and purple in color typically and protect against particles such as dust, spores, and viruses. The gray cartridge, the organic vapor, is used um, with pesticide exposure protection. The yellow is for acid gas and green for ammonia. There is no expiration dates on the cartridges, so this can become confusing. If it becomes hard to breathe um, through the cartridge, it is time to replace it. If you can smell or taste chemical or grain dust that you're using, it's also definitely time to change it. A powered air purifying respirator is also another option that uses a blower to force the ambient air through air purifying elements to the inlet covering. You need an air purifying respirator when you have heart or lung conditions that prevent the use of other respirators, or if you're unable to get a good fit with other types. This respirator cannot be used in low oxygen areas. And typically this type of respirator can range in cost from $800 to $1,400. Other types of respirators um, can include air supply respirators, such as uh, SCBA, or self-contained breathing apparatus. This respirator um, provides an air supply um, as the source of the breathing air is carried from the tank to the user. This can often be used um, in fumigation, enclosed areas, manure pits, confinement areas, um, or working around manure agitation or pumping silo entry um, where there is oxygen limiting um, areas. It's very important to remember that these um, self-contained breathing apparatuses require special training to use and maintain. I'm going to take a few moments to review a couple hazards on the farm um, and make some recommendations for common respirator selection. With grain dust exposure, the hazard of concern is organic dust that can be in the form of the feed, grain dust, spores, or molds. An N95 or P100 disposable or half-face or full-face respirator with a P100 filter is a good selection. Some examples can include the 3M 9210 or the 3M 9511. Remember, the one-strap mask will not provide good respiratory protection. 
With pesticide use, the hazard includes organic vapors and aerosols found in solid form and sprayed liquids. A half face or full face respirator with an organic vapor cartridge is a good selection. A powered air purifying respirator can also be used. A combination of hazards exist in animal confinement buildings, all related to the particles of feed, feces, insect parts, bacteria, ammonia, and gases. Different types of respirators are appropriate. For example, particulate filters, ammonia, organic vapors, and the combination cartridges. When working with livestock, hazards can be the organic dust from the molds and spores from the feed and hay that can cause organic dust toxic syndrome or farmer's lung. An N95 or P100 air filtering respirator would po provide good respiratory protection. With ex exposure to carbon monoxide, supply air respirators are recommended. Hydrogen sulfide exposures, supplied air respirators are recommended. Metal fumes are a particulate hazard produced with welding. Remember to use excellent ventilation when welding and weld outside if at all possible. Acute exposure to welding fume and gases can result in eye, nose, and throat irritation, dizziness, and nausea. Workers in the area who experience these symptoms should leave the area immediately, seek fresh air, and obtain medical attention. Prolonged exposure to welding fumes may cause lung damage and various types of cancer. With off-farm work and hobbies associated with painting, woodworking, and home projects, often the hazard is in the form of aerosols or vapors. Remember the hierarchy of control and the importance of fresh air ventilation. Respirator selection is based on the type of exposure and look at the product label for recommendations. It is very important that farmers ensure that the respirator they are using fits their face properly. Whenever you wear a respirator, it is important that you inspect it for damage or worn parts and perform the fit check. If the respirator does not seal snug against your face, you will be exposed to the respiratory hazards. To perform a positive pressure fit check, put the respirator on your face, adjust the straps to the comfortable position, and place one hand over the escalation valve. Gently breathe out and hold for 10 seconds. If the seal is good, the respirator should bulge out from the face and not leak. Then do the negative check. Place your hands over the cartridge and breathe in. Hold your breath. If there is a good seal, the respirator should suck into your face and stay there for 10 seconds. If there's a leak, readjust the respirator on your face, tighten and adjust the strap. Try the fit check, positive and negative checks again. If there is still a leak, try a new respirator. You perhaps need a different size. Remember, just because you wear an extra large t-shirt doesn't mean you need an extra large respirator. Our faces are different sizes. Another check is the fit testing, which um, is a quantitative fit testing procedure involves medical fitness to wear evaluation to determine a fit factor that the respirator you have on is providing adequate protection. Using a port account machine, the machine samples the air inside the respirator and outside the respirator during a series of simple exercises to determine if a passing fit factor is achieved. Purchasing respirators, the care of respirators, and the time of replacing filters are all very important. Keep personal protective equipment clean by washing the face piece periodically with soap and water in between uses. Store respirators in a central location on the farm and where they're most needed and easily accessible. A tackle box, 
toolbox, Rubbermaid containers all work well for storage containers if the respirator is dry. A clean, breathable bag works well um, to allow for the moist mask to dry and prevent bacteria growth. Replace the mask or filter when it is visibly dirty or when you experience difficulty breathing through it. Replace the cartridges when you can smell or taste chemical or dust when using the respirator or according to the manufacturer's recommendations. If you purchase disposable masks in bulk, it is definitely more cost effective to buy in bulk than one or two at a time. When purchasing half-face respirators, ask for assistance so that you can get a good fit. Remember, one size does not fit all. Safety supply stores have the best selection of models and sizes, and remember to check that it is NIOSH approved. It's very important for farmers to establish a baseline health profile to better understand their respiratory health status and track any changes. One way to do this is by participating in lung function screening. The lung function screening, or spirometry, is a screening tool that measures various aspects of breathing and your lung function. It involves blowing into a machine as hard and as quick as possible, often for a number of times and a number of breaths, to determine how much lung volume you have. Portable testing is very good at detecting early signs of lung disease. This test is only a screening tool and diagnosis cannot be made on the basis of this test alone. If the results fall outside of normal values, we, we would then recommend that you see your doctor for follow-up, which would include a chest x-ray and more breathing tests similar to this one. In Saskatchewan, the Agriculture Health and Safety Network hosts in collaboration with rural municipalities one-to-one -one respiratory health and safety clinics for farmers. The goal of the clinics um, is to increase the awareness of the health and safety risks associated with respiratory hazards on the farm, establish a health profile for the farmer to understand their current health status, and then identify effective methods of reducing the exposure to the hazards on the farm, such um, as reviewing their exposures within the structure of the hierarchy of control and implementing alternative work practices and correct selection of respirators. Um, the nurse also works with the farmer um, who, are, who is at risk of developing respiratory diseases um, associated with their respiratory with their respiratory hazards. Um, then uh, after the testing, the spirometry, um, there is referral for farmers that would have abnormal uh, respiratory screenings to their family physician. It's also an opportunity to review various health and safety um, resources that the network has and other resources that are available within the community. As this webinar reviewed, respiratory hazards on the farm are a major concern for the agriculture industry. What are some changes that you could make on your farm or agriculture workplace to protect your respiratory system? Do you always care, care wear the correct PPE when you should? The Breathe Easy DVD found on our website focuses on in more detail, farming-related respiratory health issues, including respiratory diseases, chemicals, and environmental exposures within the agriculture workplace. This DVD, filmed in Saskatchewan, um, presents farmers and health professionals that will discuss respiratory hazards on the farm and demonstrate how to reduce the risk by managing the hazards. We want you and your families and coworkers to farm and work in agriculture with the best health as possible. Check out the DVD with your family or coworkers to learn about many valuable tips to protect your lung function for many years to come. Here's a list of the resources um, that I described that you can find on the Agriculture Health and Safety Network website. 
and they, you may find them very helpful in promoting your overall respiratory health. Thank you. Remember, respiratory illnesses and injuries related to agriculture production are preventable. Take care. Thank you everyone for joining us. Our final webinar will be upcoming in the next couple of weeks and will focus on the topic of sleep. Once again, we would like to thank Farm Credit Canada for funding this project.